Welcome back to RxD Voices, and today we'll cover a little bit about DIY demos and why you shouldn't do them. Before we start, hit that like, subscribe button, and share this video with people that you know are thinking about doing a DIY demo. Also, if you're wondering what game is being played in the background, it's Time Splitters 2. I promise you at some point I will have something that isn't FPS. Anyways, let's talk about DIY demos and what it stands for. DIY stands for do it yourself. Kind of like how I run a YouTube page by myself and make videos by myself. Anyways, DIY demos are do-it-yourself demos, demos that you completely produce by yourself. And if you're an audio engineer who has experience doing this and makes a living out of doing this, then <laughs> hey, don't let me tell you what to do. You probably know better than I do. Now, if you're not an audio engineer, then it's a good idea to not do a DIY demo. So one of the reasons why DIY demos are not a good idea to do is because, well, they sound like they were just handcrafted together. Sound like they were written by a person, then they were directed by the same person who did it, and now they were produced by the same person. Most DIY demos, they just straight up sound like shit. Either that or they sound like somebody just put a bunch of shit together that sounded good and sounded appealing to whoever and said, okay, cool, I got a demo, I'm ready to go. And then they send it off to somebody and wonder why they haven't heard back from them in the last year. If it sounds like DIY, then they're gonna assume it's DIY and move on to the next person when you send this into an agency or something. And then you're gonna be left wondering, why have I not heard from them in the last year after I sent them my DIY demo? Because they don't wanna hear DIY. They wanna hear you at your best at that point in time. And that comes from a professionally produced demo and somebody who knows how to act. Those two together right there make for a great combination. Kinda like PB&J or Turkey on Rye or whatever your preference is. Agencies and all of them, they want to hear something that is clean cut, that is proficient, that they can work with, that they can sell on TV or in whatever high quality stakes they're working with. And a DIY demo doesn't hold up to that. I was reading a post online from a professional voice actor who stated, hey, I was talking to an agent and she said, I get DIY demos all the time and they sound like shit. Agencies get them all the time and if you're trying to apply there, take the high road and get a professional demo because then you just cut out half your competition all the people who are doing DIY by like a good percentage. The other thing is it shows them is that you are not willing to put in the effort to make a professional demo and by effect present yourself professionally. Now, speaking of that, here's one of the interesting thing. Why is it that people are making DIY demos? That's a good question to ask. When it comes to being a voice actor, especially in character work, there are a lot of people who are more fascinated by the idea and all that joy it brings in the idea of being in their favorite anime, uh, mainly anime, car cartoons, what have you, than they are in being a proficient actor who can communicate these things like a professional. So once they hear, oh, you need a demo on a website, they just put a demo together instead of investing in it and put a website and then they're like, okay, cool, I'm set. And then they find out it's not that easy. Chances are, if you're just trying to get a quick patch into whatever thing that it is you think will get you into anime, and you don't decide to actually like take the time to make sure your acting skills are on point, make sure your demo, your website are up to date and proficient. Professionals who listen to this are going to see that, and then the moment they see that, they're like, on to the next one. But that's another thing that a DIY demo communicates to the people listening, especially if they're professionals. Can you not get casted off a DIY demo? No, that's not impossible, but it's one of those, a broken clock is at least right twice every day. I hear excuses like, oh, I don't have the money. Oh, I don't want to do it. Oh, f you. That's when it should dawn on you that being a voice actor, it's a business. It's a profession. And like any profession, you have to have the tools and skills ready to do the job. And in this line of work, some of those skills and tools include acting proficiency and a demo that's professionally produced that shows the best of you. Now, if you're trying to become an audio engineer, then it's a good idea to go look up professional audio engineers who teach this kind of thing and then go learn from them. Or 
if you're going to, or that actually is a good time to probably make a DIY demo, but not send it out for representation. Use it as a study project that you can start working on and then get feedback from professional audio engineers because you're looking to become an audio engineer who does this and then ask them, hey, how do I perfect my demo making skill? Because making demos is a skill. It's a profession. People get paid for it. Okay, it's different for voice acting. It's part of voice acting, but it's a different part of the area. It's like the same building, but a different room. So to sum it up, why should you not do a DIY demo? It sounds unprofessional. It gives a really bad impression of you most, and it just sounds amateur. The people listening to these like agencies and agents, they can tell. They hear them all the time. All right, you cannot pass on by them. So take the steps to become a voice actor. Get training, meet with people, network, get a professional demo, those kind of things. It's no different than applying for a job and making sure you have the skill set or developing the skill set for that job. I know there's some people who are going to be pissed by this, but it's really nothing new that hasn't already been said. Either you want to be the person who's getting hired out of pity or you want to be the person who gets hired because you're good. I'm mainly making this video because I see a lot of people who want to go, I'm going to make a DIY demo and there we go. And then they pass it off to everyone like, look at my DIY demo. Yay, I'm good to go. And then you hear it and it's like, no, this is, this sounds bad. Stop. And then when you try and tell them, they get all up in their feelings and they start going off on you like, well, f you and what you think. It's sitting right there, man. I'm just telling you before you go get yourself in a hot water that's hard to come out of. Anyways, if you like this video, hit that like, subscribe, share to let people know, hey, think before you do something. I'll see you around.